Yeah, then we'll activate it here. Really powerful card. So we get a Redain, and then we get the Luminarch Aspirant as well. I mean, obviously, if they have a board wipe, we are going to be in a lot of trouble here. Today, we'll be looking at Queen Kayla Binkru, straight out of Brothers War. I think this is one of the most hyped white red uh, commanders in a while. She's just pretty incredible, to be honest. So the it's of 3 mana 2 3, which isn't that special, but then she's ability, which costs 4 and tap, discard your hand, and then draw that many cards. So that's already decent. After that, you may choose an artifact or creature card with mana value 1, 2, and then 3, and you put those onto the battlefield. Pretty ridiculous, and I'm pretty sure there's a way to abuse her. But in this deck, we've just gone for a full aggro build, and that's going to be basically her bodyguards. You want to get those creatures out as soon as you can, and then Queen Kayla and protect her if possible. You've got a couple of ways to protect her. You've got Old Seed of Life's Bounty, Dauntless Bodyguard, and you also have Selfless Saviour, who also happen to be creatures, so all synergizers with each other. When you get to four mana, if you've got not much in your hand, you want to use activate the ability, discard, put them into the creatures into play, and then you have a new hand. It's kind of bonkers how powerful this is. I still think she's balanced though, which is really nice. A few new cards that you might want to be aware of that I've put in the deck. I've put in the Hornstone Seeker, which is an inconspicuous 2 mana 2-2 two, two with Menace. But when he comes in, he creates a tapped Power Stone, which is very useful because you can use the Power Stone to activate her ability. It's a bit deceptive, the wording on this. You can add colours. It can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell, but it can be used to activate abilities, which is really nice. We've also got Phyrexian Dragon Engine which has unearth so anything that has unearth or flashback or madness is going to be great so we can use the front side of this in the deck and also when it dies you can um, discard your hand to draw three so it's a nice way to refill your hand you can't turn it into mystery loss to phyrexia in this video but come back soon and i'll probably be doing a mystery video as well so if you're enjoying to see all the new content come back for that but yeah the deck is aggressively curved one to three mana um, peaking at two mana. Blazing Root Waller is kind of a definite addition to If you discard this, you get to play it for free anyway for mana zero. So just think of ways to utilize your graveyard. Okay, Pengus first with Chandra. And our start again is not too bad. Uh, I'm not sure what build they're going to be. It could be Big Red here. So I don't really want to play the Blazing Root Waller yet. Have we got a Shock Alani Bolt to the face? That would be strange. Runaway Steamkin, so yeah, we're gonna kill that. Okay, and we're gonna go for Thalia because we don't want to see turn three Chandra, we're just gonna slow them down a tad. So now Chandra costs four. That's quite a good delay to be honest. I mean, they could easily just kill Thalia here. But, you know, it makes them kind of rethink their game plan a bit. So they do, they spend the whole turn doing that. That's fine with me. Let's go for the Arcane Signet. And so they can recast something from the graveyard. But they can't do it in the same turn. So let's go for the Rahilda first. And then following, if they do go for Chandra, we'll go for the Cemetery Gatekeeper. Then we can exile the Abraid and stop them from killing one of our attackers. Also, I think this Redain is going to be decent if we can put it on the Valkymira side. It means that a red really struggles to deal the appropriate damage to everything, as well as target everything too. Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, damn. It seems like they've got answers for everything here. One, two, three. Well, go for Queen Kayla. I mean, you know, she could also die, but our hand... Yeah, let's just go for this now, because as I say before, if we draw another 2-drop, we want to be able to discard that. So, when you can, it's good to get the creatures out. That would have been cool, though, to see that 1, 2, 3, put them into play, opponent's face. And obviously, it does mean that by playing here, we don't get to draw a card later on, but... It's just, yeah, it's another attacker, especially if they go for Chandra for any reason. It's going to be nice to take her out. Spikefield Hazard. Man, it's full of removal. I mean, I get it, it's mono red and a Rolling Vortex. 
Okay, so that's going to slowly kill us, but because I have more life, it's going to hurt me a bit slower. Let's activate Queen Kayla here. Sweet. So we might as well put the Blazing Ritwala into play. Oh, why couldn't I have done that? Mana cost three. That's interesting. Did the madness just override the Redain? I think it did. Well, I've certainly learned something new today. That's actually really annoyed me. You may choose an artifact or creature with mana value 1, then 2, then 3, and put them on the battlefield. So, by activating the madness cost of the Blazing Root Waller, it's actually stopped me from being able to put the Redain into play. What on earth? That's pretty crazy. Brutal Cathar. So we can use this to get rid of the Tan Razor. Yeah, I think we're going to do this. Oh, but only when it flips. Okay. So let's just swing in with the Blazing Root Waller here. If they block, we'll strangle the dragon. Okay, so they don't fall for it, fair enough. So we go for the Illuminarch here. What's the damage? So when this flips, this will exile the dragon. <clears throat> Only until this leaves. So if they kill the Cathar, then they'll get their dragon back. Yeah, this is um, this is tough. All of our toughnesses are really low, annoyingly. So if they have a board wipe. It's probably going to do really well. Vortex. Okay, land. I think strangling the Bone Crusher Giant is useful. You'd have to have really big hands to strangle a giant, though, wouldn't you? And then, yeah, let's activate Queen Keller. We get a free Archon here. Oh, and we have the uh, Mila for the following turn. <clears throat> and then we'll swing with a couple of dudes. Hopefully they don't have a way to kill the Cathar yet. Okay, it looks like the Rolling Vortex is probably hurting them a bit more than us. So remember that Archon of Amiria says each player can't cast more than one spell each turn, which means they can't go for Chandra minus a spell in the graveyard and then target one of our guys. So this is stopping their Chandra from being effective. Crater Maker can kill the Cathar, and that's sad. So we can use this to kill... Mm, so the Cathar's gonna get Cathar's gonna get got, isn't he? Alright. Let's get a combat. So if they're gonna kill the Cathar anyway, we might as well put it on Queen Kayla. Might actually be a good turn to attack with everything as well. Give them something to think about. If they want to kill Queen Kayla, that's actually fine with me because it means the Cathar doesn't die. There's actually a lot of good targets for them here. Two damage to any creature. Okay. We should have probably gone for the Mila first. So yeah, there comes the... There comes the Cathar, and back, it, well, it turns back to the dragon essentially, and they can target the same thing. So that's, is that one trigger or two on there? We'll see. Okay, so now the Flame Blessed Bolt doesn't look that good, does it? 
Go for the Mila. Yeah, let's just let's just play everything out here. And then we can use the bolt in their turn. Yeah, there's a lot of different sequencing things that could have I could have done there. Not sure why they're holding priority there, but maybe they have a kill spell or something. The running vortex will eventually just kill them. So maybe a bad a bad play. Unless you're ahead. I think it's good if you're ahead. But when you're behind, you're kind of asking for trouble here. And they can't really attack with the Tan Razor because it's a good block blocker for them. But they're still going to cast the Chandra regardless of the fact they can't do anything else. That's interesting. Andre, you need more control. Just let me yeah, burn. the Archon's just really powerful. So they're about to find out. Okay. They're going to find it the hard way. So they targeted it and they can't do anything. I thought they would have read that, but fair enough. Gamer tags deep analysis, mate. <laughs> maybe maybe change it to medium analysis. Slightly ironic. Not trying to be mean, just stating the obvious. Oh, don't rope me. Are you really gonna rope me? No, yeah. At least you accept your mistake. Cool, that was a shame, but I think if we just review the battlefield there, even if they did have the um, spike field, the one damage. It would have just killed the Aspirant. We would have killed the Dragon Rage Channeler. Swing in. They can only block one thing. Taken six, gone to one, then they're done their upkeep. So just to prove that, I, I think it was still um, not going to help. But yeah, moving on to the next game. Okay, opponent gets first with Joda, the Unifier. Hmm. Doesn't feel very fair. The matchups with this deck don't feel very fair at all. I don't know why. Keep facing some crazy powerful decks. Especially for a new deck that I've just literally made today. Um, but the algorithm deems it to be uh, way too good, apparently. So, yeah, let's go for the Embereth first, because this will come in tapped with the current stuff out on the field. Okay, Signet, so they're very close to going for Joda already, which I'm not happy about. Yeah, we're just going to have to be slow, unfortunately. Shatter the Sky will probably be, be good. Although Giant Killer also the same. Rhythm of the Wild, I don't like that at all. Could go for Lelia here kind of just get something out which will maybe let us play more lands next turn so we're not going to play this spell here okay that's fine not bothered about that anyway so next turn we can giant killer something and swing in see what they do search for glory so they they missed a land drop I think do they just get a regular snow land here that's the question or do they go for something more tempting no, it's just a straight up snow. That's that's cool with me. And a paradise druid, which gives it haste. Okay, so we can swing in. Hopefully get a land, please. No land. We could just put two counters on Lelia. For lols. Um yeah, why not? goes away anyway and now by doing that it actually goes in the graveyard so also if we flash this back from the graveyard it also puts another counter on Lelia so oh they're going for the immortal sun and still no lands which is kind of weird goodness okay so it's 7-7 seven, seven here 
fine. Down to 12. Curious as, as to what they have. Go for the selfless saviour. This will protect our Lelia in times of need. And I guess we can also go for the Magda. So it would be bad if they have an exile effect. 3, 1 and 2. So something like Farewell would be awful. We've only got 3 mana. So I don't think there's, there's any coming back from that. If they just tap out and play Joda. So they do just play the Joda. So uh, 1, 2, up to 3 mana open with the Immortal Sun there. Reducing the cost of their spells. Playing a tap land. Okay. I kind of want them to tap the Druid. But we'll see. Fragment Reality. That's really good. Alright. Going to do something weird. Swing with both. Because I want the treasure. And I just want to see what Lelia reveals. Before I use the Fragment Reality here. So get Rob the Rich. So let's use Giant Killer on the Joda. And we still have the treasure in case they have a protection spell. We can use the Fragment Reality. Okay. So, so we will lose the Magda unless they choose to block the Lelia. Yeah, that, sadly there's not much we can do about that. But they are on four and we have a lightning bolt in our hand. So we technically have lethal on board if we get to attack with a savior. This is pretty close. I mean, we've not drawn a land for about six, seven cards. Because if, if you include random draw effects plus exile triggers with the Lelia and a Joyra, well, I think they're dead. Unless they cascade into something insane here. What are they going to get? So they get an Essica. So we fragment the Joda before they have any mana open to respond with the Essica mana. Because they can, they'll have haste with the uh, rhythm you see. So it comes and taps. So at four. They can have two blockers, three six, and also a five five. So we need a land, really. I think if we get a land, don't we just win? Yeah, I think we do. Any reach? Oh no, so this gives it... Doesn't give it flying. Life and indestructible haste. Man. Okay, so they're going to have 11 toughness here. But it does give it vigilance, trample, life and indestructible haste. I think we're going to have to... We're going to have to do this though. 10-10. Swing in. So there's the land. And yeah, we'll kill the Joyra because the mana maker doesn't really bother me too much. Damn, that's such a shame we didn't... Uh... <clears throat> so yet again, we've, we've put them in a, in a very similar predicament that they, they still need a way to deal with Lelia. Five, eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they can just go for the Joda Lantern. So this is why stuff like Selfless Savior is so good, because it just sits there being annoying. Okay, so Joda comes out to play again. Right. Can we... So there's a land. We Dane prevents damage damn what do we do 11 so 8 9 10 11 12 13, 14 so if we go for Redain then it will protect Lelia here 
so they'll deal even less damage. Swords to plowshares. Oh no, that's so regretful. If I had if I had an untapped white source, that would have been so useful there. Okay. Oh, this is this is so close. I just need I just need them to not have blockers for just a little bit. But I don't think that's gonna become be uh <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen, is it? Can we get past this? Okay, into the north. That's interesting. So that, oh, to be fair, that's one mana, so they get the mana back, but it is tapped. They're desperate, aren't they? They're cycling. Okay. Valkmira does annoy them a bit. Any targeted removal is going to make it tougher for them. So whenever you cast a legendary spell. So that's not legendary, neither is that. Wow, okay. Okay. Just loads of lands. The Immortal Sun would be nice to get rid of as well. Um, so I could just go for Indestructible Day of Judgment here. Which is something that I've just realised. Uh, yeah, I can only just do because I've only got one white mana to, to the last turn. Okay, that's cool with me. So that could just... That could help. And if we also go for... Yeah, go for Day of Judgment. Can they protect their creatures? If they give their stuff indestructible, then we... Destroy all enchantments so that they actually kill the dryad. Okay, they just screw themselves up even more. Oh wow, that that was pretty good. A technical win. Love that. Fantastic. Oh, we get to go first against Azusa, but we only have two mana, and it's not. Uh, it's on the verge of being really good, but I want to mull this. Okay, this feels really good actually. We've got the ramp spell here to let us use Queen Kayla a bit faster. It's a cute little bit of artwork, this little lizard, isn't it? I like it. I like him. Comes and tap, create a power stone token. Lovely. Ooh, the gatekeeper could be good too. That's tempting as well. That's tempting because I could make them take two every time they play a land. Let's do that. Let's be super aggressive. We're red and they're green. We're going to be able to finish them quicker than them. They can finish us. Surely, right? Also, exiling stuff from their graveyard is really cool because it means that they can't replay it. Yes, let's do this. So we take damage too, but we are mono red after all. Let's get Queen Kayla out. She is so cool. Look at that. Look at that outfit as well. Wonderful colours. And an entourage. This is insane. It's like being sh shocking them every turn. So they play two more lands. They take four. Go on. You know. You know you want to. Ah, oh, brutal. They know. Ah, <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay. So for some reason, um, Arena thinks that I want to keep facing very powerful decks. Yeah. So played a few games so far. Niv Mizzet, we've had Lilian of the Veil, vale. we've had Cody. Uh, mm, seems a bit strange, considering we just we're basically an aggro deck. So we'll keep this. Hand seems okay. Go for the signet next turn. If they have any tutors, archivist, it's unlikely they do, but we'll see. <clears throat> Circular confinement, probably not going to do much here. Triple red, chromatic lantern. Four or five mana, they probably have a board wipe in their turn, right? Well, let's see. Let's see what they have. It's difficult to keep Queen Kayla Bin Krug alive, because she's only has three toughness. And she's very powerful. We can only do it at sorcery speed, which has got all the cards in our hand as well. But we've got so many cards. Um, 
Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Let's see what we get. It's a lucky dip, right? We get a whole new hand. Sweet. So choose up to two. We get a three. So we get Archon. And let's go for Plague. That seems pretty cool. That makes me optimistic. Four, five, six for Niv. Right, so if we make them draw a card in any way, they will be able to draw two, deal two. Sure. Let's see what they got. So we're going to lose the Plague. So I guess we'll get this out of the way now. Oh, what do we want? To, what do we want to do actually? Yeah, we'll get the giant killer out of the way. So them drawing two is certainly not good for us. So we'll activate this guy just because we can. We'll get rid of the field of ruin here. If we can kill the Chromatic Lantern somehow, then it's going to be really tough for them to go for the Niv Mizzet again, though. And yeah, let's swing in. Yeah, so each player can't cast more than one spell. I mean, that's, that's actually hindering us quite a bit, to be honest. Narset. We can use spells in their turn. The focused and disciplined this doesn't actually no synergize with the Teferi's Ages Insight, so I'm starting to wonder maybe Arkham of Amiri isn't good prepare. in this deck. But it does slow down other aggro decks. I don't know, it's, it's a tricky one. I think he's still good because slowing people down is very powerful. Playing with fire, two damage to anything, okay. So I could just activate Queen Caleb and Krug. Three, four, five, six. Start with the Tithe Taker, so that can be the spell we cast. Do they want to counter it? It's going to make all their spells cost more. Yeah, then we'll activate it here. Really powerful card. So we get a Redain. And then we get the Luminarch Aspirant as well. I mean, obviously, if they have a board wipe, we are going to be in a lot of trouble here. Sure. We can swing in. So, yeah, as usual, we are very susceptible to wipes. Our highest toughness is three, and red can deal three damage pretty easily. Here comes Niv again. So we can deal three damage to any target. So what we can do, swing in with these guys. So if he blocks with either one, we can just use the helix on him. Okay. We could get a free mealer out of this exchange. And draw that many cards. Could go for showdown. Yeah, let's go for showdown here. So that'll be the spell we cast. Okay. And then we can activate Kayla again. Oh, fragment. We get a Mila. So if they target any of our things, we're going to draw a card. <clears throat> Now, with combining this with Mila is pretty insane because every time they target our stuff, we get to draw. And the more things we draw, the better it is for us. In a way, I kind of want them to kill the Archon. Unsummon so we get to draw another card. So they've already used the spell for their turn. That's interesting. So we get to draw another card. 
Wow, okay. This is kind of a weird game here. So they don't want us to eat, draw, play lots of spells either. Okay, makes sense. Chemist is in sight, so they're going to draw two in response to that. Interesting. Targeting Mila. Okay, well, I mean, why not? <laughs> Let's draw. We're drawing more than a Niv deck here. So draw four, four more damage. Absolutely crazy. So they're going for the Archon now, which will open up our hand. Flippin' heck. So if you don't draw an answer within these cards, I don't know what to what to say, really. So it looks like Mila's very good against niv it then. How many lands are we drawing here? Okay, so we've basically unlocked the ability to play as many spells as we want. And now they can sadly do more things, kill more things. So even though we've got all these cards in hand, there's not much we can do. Unbelievable, yeah. Drawing two for every spell is just absurd. Okay, so we're not going to get any triggers on any of our things. See if we can resolve an I'll seed. Okay. So, right, give for the S for Sentinel here. Wow, we're really just not going to get to resolve anything, are we? Let's see if we can just get rid of the Niv here. Flipping heck. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy indeed. So they could just count. Okay, they let that one go. I suppose they've got all the cards they need now. Murmuring Mystic. Oh, that's probably even worse. <laughs> oh my goodness. Damn. This is this is a brutal matchup. Okay, so we resolve the Esper Sentinel. Come on, man. Are we going to... I don't think we're ever going to be able to resolve any creatures ever again, are we? Really? Maybe resolving the Redain is good, but we've got so many cards here that would be good to resolve as well. A braid. Wow. They cast so many spells and drew so many things that, that turn. Kind of crazy. Giant killer. Magda... And how many? We've got one, two, three. Specialist could get back the Sentinel. Could get back a number of things, actually. <clears throat> Let's just get back as many things as possible, right? Uh, wow, so many things. Archivist. Tithe Taker. I guess something of two toughness would be good, but... Yeah, let's go for the Sentinel. That'll make them think a bit. Discard four cards, okay. One, two, three, four. Right. So they've got millions of cards in their hand. The general costs 10. 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. Celestis. 
if they don't win this game, I, I don't know what to say. Okay, then let's draw. Are they going to take an extra turn? I feel like they're going to they're going to do that. Or board wipe, probably. Storm's Wrath. So that kills their birds. And they're going to four mana up. Damn, yeah, this Teferi's Age is in sight. Did so much work. Make some more tokens. Is that really the best they could have done? Make some two tokens. I feel like they've just drawn so many cards there. Really? I don't know. I just feel like... What did they discard for this? Loads of lands. Okay. Spellbinder. That seems pretty good. Let's go with that one. See what we're working with here. River's Rebuke. I guess that... Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense now why they did that. Lelia. So this attacks that will be three. Oh no, that... Mm, yeah, it's a bit tricky. Got three mana left. River's Rebuke's going to happen no matter what. But if we go for a Dane, it'll make the Rebuke cost even more. So we might as well attack just to make Lelia a bit bigger. Um, probably won't make much of a difference there. Okay. Damn, this is too much brain work for me. <clears throat> 15 life, but they've got all the best spells. So they can copy something. So they can get two copies of Epiphany. Two copies of Calamity. Yeah. I think we just we just screwed. They can cast Storm's Wrath. Okay, they chose to go for that. Instead. Interesting that they went for the Lele Year. Before regain. Yeah, I guess it doesn't make a difference, does it? And then they went for the arcane bombardment. Okay, sure. Um, 15. Yeah, given what's in their hand, um, I don't think there's any need to continue. Invoke Calamity can just get anything out of the graveyard. Cast that again. We only have two linear creatures that can attack and not really much else. Queen Kayla won't do anything because she'll come down and not be able to activate. So yeah, I think I'm going to call it a game. Um, I'm sure most of you would empathise with me here that if is at Perrin deck with a River's Rebuke and all sorts. Yeah, they've definitely got this one. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.